got track to work with. Tough. Supports are also getting a lot of gold. Yeah. And the supports, usually the weak elements are going to get caught out. So Rubik, I mean, looking at spells he could steal, there aren't really any escape spells there. The closest you've got is from the Earth Spirit, but without the Stone Remnants as well, there's not going to be a long roll away. They can easily predict where you're going to be. Night Stalker should be able to dodge ganks pretty well. Gyro can be finicky to jump on, especially if he cooldowns defensively. But, oh, speaking of maybe hard things to kill, at least after the laning phase. Oh, yeah. Timbersaw. And this is really good against the Dragon Knight. And it does pretty well against the Lone Druid as well, because Lone Druid relies on harassing out with the bear. But with the reactive armor, once you get two points in that, very hard to actually force a Timbersaw out lane. You have, of course, got the Maledict, so he has to be careful. Yeah, Timbersaw is just, he's going to be your frontliner here, and, and he's going to let the backline of what's going to end up being Gyrocopter, Bounty, Nightstalker, and Rubik do the dirty work as he runs forward at these heroes. And with the track and with the vision from Nightstalker, I don't know if you're going to be able to get away from maybe a Timbersaw chasing you with all that. Yeah, it's definitely a snowball-oriented lineup. They've got the gyro in case things do kind of backfire. So if he's farming the whole while, it's not all in on this one hope that we can just break the lanes and push forward. Yeah, I, I think Team Secret are ready for a good early mid game, but can also make it late as well. And OD gets picked up. I like it. Yeah, uh, last pick for OG. Yeah, I like that. I thought it may be like it's going to be something like OD or Chant or something that can do the pure damage so to deal with the Timber Saw. And also, like OD in this scenario, his concern is definitely going to be the Night Stalker with the Crippling Fear. Pretty effective at him early on. But like we said, this is probably a laning Night Stalker. So you yeah. haven't really got that, that paranoia of the harassment. It'll be interesting to see where the Night Stalker goes and what he's going to be able to do in this game, especially early. I think the OD is uh, something that might be a problem for Secret. So we'll see how they try to deal with it. Like you said, the Crippling Fear would be quite nice, especially in that first night, if they can go over there over mid and try and get a kill on the OD. It would be pretty... Speaking of interesting, and I think you might have already decided to tell them from how you're speaking of it, who do you think is going to win game one? Uh, I'm going to go with Secret, I think. I think Secret has the aggression. I, I love to go there too. Like Bounty Hunter, is, Secret make it work so well all the time. Yeah. And Bounty Hunter is the not the king, but he's a crucial part of this. If he gets a good start, they're going to snowball out of control with the track gold. Yeah, they look ready for the mid early game, and they also look like they can compensate going into the late game with that Bounty Hunter with the track gold. You know, getting those supports at farm and, and also boosting up that Night Stalker, who I'd say kind of needs that farm a little bit later in the game to not fall off very heavily because we've seen Night Stalkers in the off lane in the past where, you know, through the mid game, they are quite strong. And then all of a sudden they just kind of don't do as much. But maybe with Gyrocopter and Timbersaw, they can make up for the loss in Night Stalker. And if you put enough pressure on that or Devara, he keeps having to bury out regen. And that gives Puppy so many opportunities to just snipe the Coria. And of course, as an invis hero, like whenever I talk to the boss fires, like, yeah, when we play those invis heroes, our goal in life is just to kill your Coria. <laughs> we're waiting, lurking around the corners, whether it's a Treant, whether it's a Bounty, or maybe a boss for Nyx, they're waiting. Yeah, uh, we'll see how many courier kills he gets. And actually, a little prop bet. How many courier kills do you think he's going to get? Two. Two? All right, I'll take uh, three or more. Three or more. You just want to... Wow. Well, it's zero to one, two, and then three or more. Someone usually. call Pedder Something on this man. Because that is clearly animal abuse. And, well, let's see if it does turn into a little bit of abuse. Because we are underway and in the game. Both teams moving out already. You have got Puppy going pretty deep. Should be looking to get a ward around the back after scouting if anyone's bought. We'll have to see where everybody is kind of leaning at at the moment as it looks as though S4 will be over mid, but no tail heading in the safe lane. We've seen safe laners before go to the off lane and then they go tri lane off lane and then uh, solo in the safe lane. We'll see what team, uh, what secret or OG are really trying to set up for. I mean, with the Maledict cooldown being bigger, I'm not sure if you actually want to just station a tri lane because obviously you haven't got the constant presence you would have had. Mm -hmm. And I know if Spirit wants, like, Dude, he's a surprise. He just wants to come out nowhere like, hey, you didn't see this coming. Roll straight on top of you and then just smash him in the face. <laughs> Earth Spirit Party. Hey, we're all here and ready for the Earth Spirit Party as I just roll on in. And uh, we'll see if he's able to do that as Puppy, Invis, Under, Jerax, and No Tail. So just has to be a little bit careful. I was, I thought Jerax might have spotted that, but I don't think he has dust anyway. To Puppy's just waiting to see if the, any wards get placed. But the thing is, Fly's top with the wards right now. So he does get one ward down himself just to uh, block the camp in the bot lane. So to stop those through pulls. It's interesting to see Mad, who's going to be in the off lane with this OD. 
At least that's how it's set up right now. And it's just interesting. You usually see him mid. How do you think he's going to be able to do in this soft lane? I think they were expecting to meet Timbersaw. They're going to be surprised to find Nightstalker there. It's still good for them, but I feel like the Timber was the, the perspective for them. Yeah, that that advantage for them would have been quite nice to have Mad up against Timber. So Fada is going to be in this lane on the Night Stalker. They've got Fly here with Mad with the OD as well as the Witch Doctor. Definitely potentially get a couple of kills here if the Night Stalker does stay by himself. Secret's rotating around the back though. And Poppy, he might scout them out. The Sentry's there though. So if he comes to the... Oh, Terax just made obvious. He uh, cancelled the attack animation, but there's no way Poppy didn't see that. Yeah, roll, rolling boulder, not going to catch Puppy at all. And now they've sent the Rubik here. So Rubik, Night Stalker as well as Puppy on this... Uh, Bounty Hunter will be interesting. Now it's tri lane versus tri lane. Yeah, I think Seeker's right in kind of even this up. You don't want to actually sit in a lane with Timbersaw in the first place. That hero needs XP desperately. So any sort of dual lanes or tri lanes really hurt his potential to uh, come online in the mid game. Yeah, mid one over mid, of course. And then uh, he's on that gyrocopter with uh, the DK here. The man always okay. makes it simple. Like, where do you play mid one? Mid. Yeah. Okay. Do you need to change your lane if you ever play a different lane? <laughs> Safe one. Off one. Off one. <laughs> I could walk. But I mean, this is nice from Poppy. Like, he, he wants to lurk around mid, and the thing is, S4 is not going to want to bring out the choreo because you just saw Poppy mid. Right? Yes. So, this bounty hunter's. But, and the best part is, Puppy knows this, so he goes straight bot. Yeah, they might look to go on no tail, ace level two. Uh, I don't think he's really in the mood to really go after anybody. He wants Calm. the experience, he wants to get that gold, and, and kind of just sit stationary in this lane, complacent with just getting last hits. Yeah, he, he's going to get level 3, and it'll be the second point in reactive armor, so he won't be ready to aggress. I feel, you know, he's gone for one in the uh, the well and death. So Invis rune over bottom, and yeah, so Bounty Hunter's going to make his way over. Again, it's just to really chip away at no tail, make him feel uncomfortable in this he's lane. And, yeah, and he actually ends up getting spotted. Jerex thinking about going in the bear, not getting the root, so... It, it's just, I, I don't know, I feel like Puppy more effective probably in other lanes at the moment. I mean, yeah, I, I remember Bear gets root at the uh, the later levels, of course. That, that hero would be ridiculous. Could you imagine level one Bear just able to root people? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, who needs a Dark Willow anymore? We'll just take our chances with this. So it's more or less evened up into uh, duo lane in the top lane, and this should really favor the Outward Vara. So Seb should have a great time because I mean, you can already see from the last hits, it's more the case like immediately as this lane goes on, is going to really suffer against OD. It's not your situational melees that just run in, do a big spike of damage and leave. It's a Night Stalker that just wants to stay there, get XP, get quick boots, maybe phase boots, and then rotate. Do you think he's going to move that first night, or is he going to just stick in the lane? I feel like you should be moving the first night, but it, it's always awkward because the argument is, is it worth losing lane XP and gold for a kill? And I think it's going to depend on if OG start to pressure Secret's lane. So if they feel like someone's fallen behind, then you, you basically substitute that with the Night Stalker ganking. Because, especially the first night, like, you ask most Night Stalkers, they, they'll be like, yeah, first night I should be getting a kill. And if you don't get a kill, you really feel like you're behind. It's usually not true, but as in, like, in statistics form, but for what the hero is meant to be doing, you just feel like you're not utilizing. So, pretty tame in the early parts of this game uh, not something we've seen at least recently we usually see bloodbaths in the first five minutes i mean i came for the blood baths okay they told me there would be a lot of blood and yeah so he may take a little bit of damage here the telekinesis lift they're gonna pull him back looks like mad a little bit of trouble the cask is bouncing now yeah so he needs to run but can he get away quick enough the maledict is on him the final kicks go through maledict will take him out and now they just need to get mad out you have to try and stay alive can he actually survive this though? Meanwhile, Mad. Oh, the Fade Bolt. Yapsa gets a kill. Now Fly's going to go for the TP out. He'll make it, but his carry will not. And a fantastic turnaround. But they get a kill on the Jerax as well. So Puppy, I mean, this is what he was waiting for. He wanted to see something else happen on the map. Attention be drawn. And then he knew no TP response would happen. And yeah. So getting two kills there, especially early. It looked like the Rubik was going to fall. Ends up getting the Fable. Sit back a little bit more. Maldic not doing as much as maybe we would have thought. Meanwhile, mid lane. Rocket Barrage comes on through. And S4 has to try and run. He ends up getting dropped. There's the homie missile coming out onto Jerax. He's got three heroes around him. Trying to get back behind this tower as Fada continues the chase. He is in nighttime. So looks for the boy. Gets Jerax. This should be another kill. And will be 4 nothing so far for Secret. An early 1,000 net worth lead. It, it's going all Secret. And there's that bloodbath we were looking for. I mean, first night time struck. And you ask the question, there's the answer. It yeah. was a case of mid one's doing okay, but he knows he's not doing as well as Dragon Knight. So S4 is getting a better lane. And the, like out of all the heroes on the side of OG, you you want to control in the laning phase is the Dragon Knight because you know immediately as soon as he gets six, if he feels comfortable, he's going to push tower. 
right now. Just a, an early lead for a secret. They're, again, leaving no tell to just farm, and that's what we talked about. It's a lone druid. It needs to farm. He's going to be spending most of that time farming out. And we'll see if maybe he tries to fight early if he gets that home of the Dominator, but I really doubt it. It's like, it's one of those carries where fights have Ooh, over top. Ball. They go for man. They've got the Void as well as the Telkinesis. Fable hits onto the OD. I don't think he's getting away. Will not get away. And Fada with the kill onto Matt. So five nothing, five in a row unanswered kills here from Secret. And they're being aggressive over mid and top and pretty much leaving Lone Druid to his own accord against this Timbersaw. They kind of have to change the lanes, but like there's no there's no substitute that wants to be in that off lane right now, right? Like you look at their choices, like Dragon Knight is pretty tanky, but we saw how quickly anyone dies in that top lane. Yeah. And you don't want Lone Druid there. Meanwhile, Matt gets caught again, lift it back, the boy is there and you've got a room, this is night time. Part is domain and you're just not being careful here. Yeah, they're getting them again, and it's six kills in a row here for Secret. As ooh, DK getting a little bit low more. over mid. I, I, he might actually drop. They are looking for Fly over towards top. They've got a couple of heroes here. Fly trying to get away under this tower, trying to heal himself up. But Poppy continuing on forward. Here's Yaps, or here's Fada. Still nighttime. There's the Telkinesis. They'll drop him down, and with the Void, Fada will get another kill for Secret. And DK also drops mid. They are not respecting the Night Stalker at all. They are not respecting this first night cycle and how big that attack speed and movement speed is, especially with Rubik there, because also once the Fade Bolt comes out, you can't stay and, and return damage. You know you have to leave. And I know it's hard. The mentality is like early on, especially you don't want to give away, but in the mid lane, Dragonite, it's what's going for this. But I mean, Eldragon Dragonform just used to essentially force mid one away. Yeah. And he needs to actually get pressure on the tower now. He needs to get value out of using that. It feels like he's almost trying to make up for how far down they are like he forced out that outer dragon form in a spot that maybe he doesn't even need it yeah that forces mid one back but i just don't think that's really enough well he's shown his hand he's shown that he yeah. wants to fight so he's leveled the dragon tail I mean, this is like like you you, you can go for it a fight it's dependent on what you plan to do in the next minute or two but speaking of things being done, Fada on the bot lane, gonna go straight for No-Tail here. He's gonna use the roar to get them away, and Mad is here as well, but look at the TP response. They need to work quick. The root holding Ace in place, but it'll make his escape. Mid one, trying to chase through, won't be able to find it, but Fada turns on the No-Tail. There is no roar for them to escape. Puppy forced away. This bear and Hellbear doing just doing so much damage. They have to back off. They can't continue that chase. And, uh, the power of a creep taken at this point in the game, that, that is exactly what you just saw there. Oh gee, it, it looked as though oh, that boulder smash comes out onto Ace. He has to try and get away. There's the timber chain off, but the cast bounces around and it will stun up reactive. Ace. He's only level six, but has that reactive armor getting chased continually. Now puppies see now as they've got the ward, they've got the vision continuing on forward. Will be mad. The chakram thrown forward. And again, OG just pressuring in between the tier one and the tier two. His secret are forced back further and further. Oh no, the cooldown though. Mid one's gonna get caught out here. They chase onto him, but he's moving quick enough to get away. The creeps have arrived and so is the bear, but they make it to the shrine. Yapsel, maybe left behind. Should be able to move away quick enough. And once again, Ace is being super aggressive straight into Mad's face here. Jason across. can they actually pursue this? The bear's super low. So OG, they just don't want to fight. They need to get some help on that bear before they return to this. Yeah, fortunately enough for Secret, OD did not have Sanity's Eclipse. He had stacked up almost 30 intelligence at that point. You drop a Sanity's Eclipse on top of this team and, and you're really going to do some damage. But I think that was just fortunate for Secret that he was only level 5 at the moment. I mean, he hasn't been getting enough levels. And yeah. usually, like, yeah, <laughs> that would have been a dream come true. Because when you're playing OD, your you're first point into Sanity's Eclipse... It's actually not about killing people, it's about getting rid of the mana so you can kill people. Yeah, usually that level one Sanity's Eclipse you drop early in the fight so mm -hmm. they don't have mana and you want to be able to work forward from there where they can't throw anything back at you. But you're not going to stun me, now I'm just going to run at you. Right? Yeah. It's, it's pretty effective. And now they have one more push on the mid lane. Perhaps all. He's actually going to start stealing Lone Druid spells. This is, uh, this is a different approach. I mean, you might as well have something. Tail moved over mid is... But S4 over top, but... They're trying to pressure the lanes. They're just trying to get a tower. They're trying to open up the map a little bit. But now yeah. Fada, nighttime comes out. Jumping on S4, drank tail through. Can Ace chase this? He's a little bit too slow, but Puppy come around the backside. Yeah, he might get this. The slow goes on. Nana, gonna chase through. There's a the Chakram. S4 stuck in the middle. There's the cooldown as well. Everyone's come up for this kill. They want themselves some Dragon Meat. The turnaround. Oh, Jerex has stunned so many people. Mid one, try to stand his ground. So they can't stay it. Mad gets shredded and so does Fly. They might chase for more, but it looks like Jerax is far enough away. They lose three heroes there as Secret. Nighttime strikes again. Yeah, Nighttime, Night Stalker, he's ready to go. They also bring over Ace in mid one. He looked for a split second. OG was going to turn that around with the three-man boulder smash that Jerex landed. 
At that point, though, Mad was a little bit too low to really make the turnaround possible, and then they just wiped him uh, with those three heroes. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you've got to respect Jarax when he's on Nurse Spirit, but at the same time, Secret have such a nice cluster fight. You've got the Gyro, who's going to do the Rock Barrages. You've got the Timbersaw, who wants to be close to you as well. Nice still wants to be punching the face. Most of their lineup actually is fine with being grouped like that, because OG don't have that huge spike. Like, they don't have a giant AoE. They don't have an Echo Slam. They don't have these big spells. They've, they've got to an extent with the Brief Fire, which isn't too bad. They've got the Cast Bounces. But then you're relying on the Maledict over time to tick people out. And if you can't get one kill and flip it, in secret, this is this is what we were saying at the start. They are a very tanky lineup, especially with the reactive armor on Ace Jaro as well as the Timber. Like we saw in that last fight, they're just able to run you down. Don't really have that turnaround. And even Barracks does something like stun three people. Smash. Didn't seem like it was enough. Is already taking too much damage. They can't even find a kill at this point. It's 11 nothing, 3,000 net worth lead for Secret. And Poppy's almost six. Yeah, and Puppy's almost six. They have a lead. That means they're getting trackled afterwards. It, it's oh, only going to boost up a little bit further, and they've got the sentry. S4 is going to hide for now as Mad comes over, but Puppy able to make it safely across the mid lane. They'd love to find him right now. We were just saying he's very close to six, so if you can slow that down, you're a little bit less worried so that when you uh, lose free heroes, if you lose free heroes like that previous fight, you don't give away like 1,000, 1,500 gold. But those fights are going to be more costly as Bounty Hunter hits that six. So it just, they need to be worried about Puppy and they need to be worried about this six and as well as the aggression because they've got 11 kills. So they're not oh, just standing still back. as the Void comes out as well as the Tokinesis onto this DK. As we're trying to get away as he hits the Dragon Tail on a bot of the cast, follows it up with the Maledict. They throw the ulti from Fly, but he's able to run back as Jax just a little bit to the right of Fada with that Boulder Smash. Trying to lock it in from far outside the box. Level 2 Maledict isn't feeling so strong right now, is it? No, it's not, and it's it just doesn't seem like it's doing enough where maybe last patch you feel oh. it more early. Oh, they Puppy. got the rolling boulder. There's the speed. There's. They've got the boulder smash to follow it up. Puppy slowed down. Fly comes in. They've got S4 surrounding Puppy, and there actually is the boulder smash as they kill a Puppy. Fodder now knows there's, there's actually vision there, and that's how they knew what's going on. I mean, you know, it was interesting that he ran in so boldly, even though it's nighttime, considering he just saw them jump on Puppy for no reason, who was yeah. Invis. But he, luckily, he gets away. Nighttime is his friend. He'll be able to run away quick enough. All the while, Ace is trying to farm up. I think this is a big concern. Like, yes, Lone Druid is farming fantastically well, but in fairness, Ace doing pretty well for an off lane timber here. He did get left alone, but still. Top man, a little bit of trouble. Bada chasing on him, go for the TP out, and once again, the weakness of the Night Stalker finally exposed yeah that's what we were talking about is you throw that void and then it's like now what you're not going to stop me from TPing out it's just it's not going to happen oh, as they've cool got down. the telekinesis as well as the call down rocket barrage comes through on s4 they've got fly the boulder smash that's going to actually split the seams i'm not sure it hit the cast comes through they'll take out s4 anyway timber chain forward from mid one maybe looking for more but with the app getting the kill and those two supports backing off they're not going to find anything else and now it is 12 to 1. i always love the beautiful irony when you kill like as a rubik you kill someone with one of their own spells like, that's an arc. Like, I am the Dragon Knight now. I mean, it'd be even more so if you held the Elder Dragon form, right? Like, I am definitely the Dragon now. That fits the lore as well. Like, you know, Dragon Knight, the whole killing and Oh, no. The smash as they come on through. There's the Sanity's Eclipse dropped early. The Maledict getting hit as well as the ulti on the Fada. They don't get the kill just yet. They'll take out Fada. They'll look for Mad as he gets hit by the homing missile. And they will get the kill as Ace shreds him with the Timber Chain as well as the Whirling Death. The turnaround trying yet. to come from OG as there's the Rolling Boulder forward, but right into the Whirling Death of Ace. There's the track placed on Jerex. The chase is still on. As we're trying to find Hungry. Ace, Boulder Smash is going to land. He's not got a lot of mana left over, but another Whirling Death comes out. They've got the Magnetized Dragon Tail, but he's already onto the high ground with the Timber Chain. As we're into the Elder Dragon form, and they might just look to push the mid-tier one. Like, can't chase the Timber Soul like that. You need to just get him straight away or back away. They, they will get the tower at least, so that's good. They, they need to actually get some gold. They're feeling a little bit hungry right now. Ace isn't going to let them do this easy. They're going to look for something to expose right now. They could actually stop him from taking the tower. They'll get the deny. Not worth keeping it up. But you, you, know, you still haven't actually got OG's tier 1 mid. And that's a big deal. The fact that they've held on to it that long, despite the dominance from Secret in the laning phase. Yeah, big dominance coming out from Secret, and it's only going to get worse because now they've got track to work with. So it'll be interesting to see how OG's going to try and react 
They're looking for the Radiance, getting close to the Sacred Relic as well in Druid. So he's not too far off that Radiance. It's not the worst uh, timing in the world, especially because he went for that Helm of the Dominator. But once he gets that Radiance, I wouldn't be surprised to see OG now being the aggressors and not trying to play the counterplay. Yeah, well, Secret looking to fix that completely as they smoke up. They're going to move around. Remember, the track was online last fight. It'll be online again. And no tell. You were just talking about the man. He gets called out. The cooldown set of the lifters hold him in place. And now there's no escape. The track gold's going to go their way. But look at this fly coming across. The home is all going to hit. They should be chasing onto this mid one. Rocket Barrage chasing through. Fly in a little bit of trouble. They get the track out now. Jerax, he can't roll away. He gets stunned by the void. Double kill for Yapsaw and free dead on the side of OG. And there's that track coming out on all those heroes as they grab a bunch of gold, now going up from 3,000 to 5,000 net worth ahead, and that's a 2,000 net worth change. You get three kills there, all have track, and it is just beautiful from Secret at this point, and they're looking to continue being aggressive, continue going down the throats of OG and not letting them get that answer. Killing off No-Tail is huge because it pushes back that Radiance, and it pushes back where OG are looking steadily to fight for quite some time. It's now Puppy. over mid, they've got Puppy, a little bit in trouble, but he's got mid one here with the homing missile ready to fly. No-Tail might be in a little bit of trouble, they might want to go on this. Flies a little bit too far back now. S4 was guarding, so right call made by them. Got the Bloodstone on Timber, and we likely see with Lena and Lashrat. That first fight is very important once you have that Bloodstone, because you want to get that the, as much value as you, as you can out of it. And when you die in that first exchange, and you get your your charges cut like that, you're you're just looking to go up. You know, obviously everybody's trying to go up, but you want to make sure that first fight goes right when you pick up a Bloodstone. I mean, speaking of going up, what you'll probably see the Timber do next is probably he, I can see him looking towards Yule's here. It's a pretty good pick up this game because you can dodge out spells from the Earth Spirit, the Witch Doctor, and the Dragon Knight. And of course, uh, that, that beautiful combo that has been happening a lot at the moment, which is you Timber Chain, and then you Yule's up, and then it drags you out safely. Secret up. The Secret's up so much. Yeah. The track's just showing 7,000 net worth. But it's not just the tracks, it's the fact that, that your Gyro can farm actually just as well as anyone on OG, but... He's getting these track goals as well. And yeah. you just saw, like, they, they're on the dire side, so they've got that infamous uh, triangle of glory for him. Just stack all those camps and watch him farm. I, I love that that's become the triangle. Like, that's just the, the code word for that area. And you're able to farm up that full triangle. It's, it's I, I don't know, personally for me, it's always impressive to see someone who can farm it very efficiently like that, especially mid one over there, farming love, with the gyrocopter. That's why I love gyro mid, because you can just use the flat cannon as well to harass out, and people can't get away because the range one is insane. Yeah. And OG, no. They know that someone's up here. And if they look in the right place, they might find Farda, but they are looking in the wrong direction. They might Maybe actually they get, get Yaps price. or... Yeah, that would be a nice consolation price, a nice Hold silver, the but there's the rolling boulder. It will hit. The boulder smash follows it up. Blink, as well as the Dragon Tail, should have this kill and will get this kill. Telekinesis a little bit late, but nobody there to follow it up from Secret. You feel bad for him. Like, he, he basically chew himself for a tiny sliver of a second, and Farda, in the meantime, gets shredded by Fly. Jump straight on top of him. Yeah, no tail there with him, and five heroes up top will take this tier one tower. It's looking good for OG. They're starting to bring it back, and, and that's the kind of aggression that they need. I mean, I feel like Secret need to respect the fact that OG as a five man is pretty strong still. Yes, they're building a lead, but when you split up the way Secret did, I don't think that's the way to go. I mean, it's nighttime, so I can actually appreciate that Fada thought he was a lot safer, but it's nighttime. So instead of feeling safe, get aggressive. Would yeah. be my advice. And I like that from OG. They do need to make up this deficit, which it, it, at some point was 7,000. Now only 5,000. So if they're they able to radiance. cut it back, get the Radiance, yeah. They, they can start being the team they wanted to be. And it's taken him 20 minutes to get to this point. But That's I think now they they found their items and they can turn this around. They can start being the ones who are aggressing. Look at straight away. They just want to create space for Lone Druid to farm. So they're going to smoke up and go aggressive and mad. Ooh, smoke, smoke broken by Puppy. Dust, so Puppy walk away. Fly rise, but he flies way too late. He's waiting for Puppy to come back and break that smoke again. Yeah. And they throw a nice ward up there towards the top end of this jungle. They're trying to go in deep, where the tier one, in between where the tier one and the tier two stands, and they actually go more really towards deep. the top lane. Yeah. Just getting just the whole jungle aggressive wards up. wards. It's good because they know Gyro wants to keep farming, and Gyro is basically a jackpot for them. It's the gold pot at the end of the rainbow. Lotus Orb picked up for OD as well as Boots of Travel. I actually really, timber. really like this. Like, you think what you're up against, the Void, the Silence, and, and also it's going to get rid of Silence, that your biggest, as, as an outward virus going this mid-game, your biggest threat is being silenced. Yeah, you want to be able to get rid of that Crippling Fear, which especially at night is going to be such a hamper to your fight. 
Timber saw just ace up here, trying to defend for now, maybe looking to go in a little bit later as OG's making his way over, as well as the rest of OG. They are in the jungle. Pop, pop. Puppy spots all this, but he's in the sentry ward. There's the dust. Has to go in the corner, and Boulder Smash comes out on two. Now they've got S4 continuing to go in with the mound and coming through. Call down hits, as well as the rocket barrage. Lifted up will be S4. Timber chain forward with the whirling death. They've already taken out three on the back lines. They've got the root coming on through on Afana, though. Take him out. So two dead on secret as the rest chart start to go back, and only two survive from OG. They can't continue to proceed forward on secret, and this is a little bit of the aggression hurting them. They can actually continue to go because they've got a lone druid and he's looking to do so, but Timbersaw's not the target. They want to get onto Puppy, but they haven't got detection. They'll have to back up and look towards the tower. No tail wants to be a little bit careful that they're getting low, but that's the thing. They can still aggress. They, the problem is they just don't have detection. Yeah. So they will back off as a result of that or maybe hang around and look for initiation with Mad. Try to TP out, but there's Puppy the lift the onto the bear. They throw him down. Ace continuing forward is. Mag continues to hit away at Ace, but again, they're just trying to keep this engagement a little bit long, maybe waiting for this gyrocopter to come back. I mean, this is always the counter side to the whole Helmet Dominator on, on the Lone Druid, is your bear's going to get 300 gold. You're just adding another 200 gold, and we just saw they got, they got the centaur. They're happy with that. Like, it's almost as good as killing the support at this point. Minus the track. <laughs> yeah. Can, can we track the centaur? Can we get a little bit of a buff here for Bounty Hunter? Yes, because this hero definitely needs to be picked <laughs> up more. I want him every game, first pick every time. What? Oh, good lord. That's like uh, that's like Chinese uh, about a year ago, I think. They are looking to go in on Mad. They've got Puppy on the front lines. Mad backing. Oh, roll on the side. The Dragon Tail comes out. Looks to far again, pretty low. They've used the signs to pretty early. The Mountain should take Fada out in the end, but the Death Ball doing a lot of work in returns. Rubik did steal it. No tell, uses the fit to try and get them away, but Puppy, he's got the track on him. I don't know where that Timber Chain was going, but I can tell you they're running straight for No Tail's face. Can he do enough damage? No, they can't. S4 gets the kill with the Dragon Tail, and now Ace needs to chase for more. Fly again, super low, but he will stay alive with the food restoration, but not with the after effect of that Timber Chain. S4 just looking for the Courier. Mischance uphill plus Glyph means he won't get it. It's a favorable trade for Secret in the end. And yeah, they lose the Bounty Hunter a little bit early, but he did get those tracks out to start that fight. They get a couple of kills there, again, with Ace. S4, S4 still looking him. for this courier. Yeah, I think they know exactly where he is. They've got that vision. There's the telekinesis coming on through. They've got mid one continuing on forward. The homing missile is going to fly through. Gets it against the courier, but he will lose his life in exchange. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, you didn't embarrass the man, okay? You thought you were, you thought you were tricking him. But in the end, he's like, you know what? El Dragon Form's running out. I'm going to be useless for a while. Might as well just get some gold for my team. Dollar, dollar. It almost felt like one of those old compendium challenges. Get X career oh, kills. Oh, meanwhile, far enough. They almost caught him there with the boulder smash. I mean, even at night time, you get caught by that boulder smash, the follow-up is going to kill you. Yeah. He's going for the halberd here, which I really, really like. It's mainly going to be for the outward devourer, especially since he's going for that lotus, and he's going to be looking to get rid of the silence. So as soon as he gets rid of the silence, disarm. <laughs> it's just basically part of his whole existence this game feels like he's there to just annoy the crap out of mad yeah one way or another you're not hitting me if you could say he's trying to make mad mad i'm gonna stop <sighs> i'm gonna go walk. just go <laughs> <laughs> i hate myself for that one but i like that mid one's gone for this axe so we've talked about this in previous series and how it's kind of been very popular in cis but not elsewhere Wow, he's got a solo kill on the fly. But the thing about the gyro axe... Rolling boulder over mid, they look for Yapsor. Oh. There's the Yules on up. Right, Rubik trying to keep himself alive, but there's the boulder smash as well as the magnetize. And yeah, four heroes around you. You're not getting out. You're just a Rubik, yeah. and you will fall to S4. That's that stun effect you saw there. So what I was going to say about the Ags is when they jump on you, they stun you like that, you're still attacking them. You don't care. Like, you're getting value even when you're the target. So it kind of... It's an insurance policy. Do you want to go after the gyro who's attacking you more? Not really, but you have to. So you jump on him. He's still killing you while you're stunning him up. There's no stuns left for Ace. Timbersaw snowballs out of control in the fight. Yeah, we were kind of seeing a little bit of that in the last fight over in the top jungle area, mm. where Ace was coming across more and more and was missing a couple of things that were, pro if you know, if he hit those abilities, might have put it all together. But he'll have Ax, he'll have the double chakram and if he's given an opportunity like that again i think he just goes all over og and, and they might even get the team wipe i mean it's really smart itemization because he's got 22 bloodstone charges on that on that timber and he's going for the axe next so if mid one can draw that attention i mean you see what happens when a hero gets like 30 bloodstone charges it doesn't make it impossible but tim saw he's, he's not as ridiculous as someone like a storm spirit with a bloodstone but he's still pretty insane 
He's able to just survive with the reactive armor, constantly have S4. mana to continue to go okay, in. Okay, going to him here. Yeah. Boy comas out, the sun's there as well. s has got no escape. Ace just arriving to get the kill, and more track gold. This time will be dead for 50 seconds. And okay, Roche. God like his ace, and that's, yeah, straight into Roche. And they can do this pretty quick as well. Ace could just tank this if they get a little bit paranoid, because you are a Timbersaw. With that reactive armor, and that brings him to 23 Bloodstone charges. I mean, OG know this is going on, but they can't actually do anything about it. They're TPing now, but it's going to be too late at this point. Especially without DK, I just don't think you're able to get in there. They don't really have as much lockdown as they would like, and there it is. There's the first Roche kill. They get the Aegis, and with that secret, they could use it to farm, but at this point, they're 9,000 net worth ahead. And, and I gotta go like Wolf. Goodbye, nice, Wolf. Nice, easy 200 gold. It's a mini bear. And the, because they're taking things like the Alpha Wolf, it's so easy to kill. Yeah, just quick clean up, quick 200 gold. And it's, uh, that's nice. That's nice. It's a nice little appetizer, I'd say. Animal Dominate is so good as Nyan. But if it wasn't as ridiculously powerful as it was with the stats given, uh, rather the regen given and the attack speed, I'm not sure if it would ever be picked up against heroes like Gyrocopter. Because he just laughs like flat cannon. I'm gonna hit everything in range. Let's go. Hi, to like uh, 200 gold, please. Oh, certainly. Here you go. This is a drive-through order for Gyro. <laughs> so yeah, Timber saw Ace will pick up that Ags and Solar Crest here for the Bounty Hunter. Again, we talked about it in the draft where Bounty Hunter makes it so those supports have so much gold. Look at where Night Stalker is. Yeah. Look at where Rubik is. Bounty Hunter sitting at the bottom of his team with 5100 gold, but, but they're still supports. so rich. Yapso's yeah, down here, and so is Fada. They're gonna get rolling onto Fada. In the meantime, Yapso does get dragon tailed and killed off. But look at this, just trying to interrupt Fada from getting out. He do get the stun, and now Fada should die as well. Makes it nighttime, gonna fly through the trees, but they can catch up with him here. He's got a few seconds before Imminent Fate catches up and S4 sees him in the tree line. The drag tail goes out. The disarm won't save him as Mad is there as well. And I was about to say, like, what you're saying about they're worth so much gold, yes, which means a kill on Rubik. Like, look how much gold Rubik is worth. He's worth more than Father. That's crazy. That's, that's actually crazy. It is. That he's gotten more than the core Night Stalker that it just seems like he's he is everywhere. He absolutely is doing so much. Like, Bounty Hunter's kind of like the, the, the uh, well, speaking of Bounty Hunter, gets stunned up. Jarex is ping, he's like, I didn't bring detection. Can someone get over here so we can actually kill for Bounty Hunter? Nice, nice roll through, builder. catches him. Can he actually hit another spell? It does, doesn't catch him. Jarex, are you going to blindly go for it? Pull it back, pull it back. He gets the kill. Dude, it's, it's like a game. Good. It's like a game of battleships. I told you, man. It's like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to just stick this over here. Did I hit your battleship? Yes, yes, you killed my Bounty Hunter, who's worth 5,000 gold, which... As a support worth 4,000, you're quite happy with that as a solo kill. Oh, yeah. 28 minutes in, 26 to 11. Again, Secret still with now a 10,000 net worth lead, and that does come from the track, come from the fights that they take. And they haven't exactly stuck together, I'd say, with this Aegis. They're using it more to farm, which I didn't think they do. I thought it's an with the lead, they, yeah. I thought, though, they'd be a little bit more aggressive with well, we've it. We've seen teams a lot more reserved and paranoid nowadays because they know how easily games can turn on them. This isn't a few years ago where people would make one big play because they want to finish quicker and get you know, five man black hole and die or something like that. But the problem with this is when you split up like this, when you've got the Aegis as an insurance policy and you're not stacked together, you just saw the pickoffs that happen and even a bounty hunter might shift like 1,000 gold towards OG because you're reaching that, that value on each of these heroes. I just feel like bounty hunter is the, the communist of Dota. <laughs> Everyone is equal. Everyone must have their fair share of the pie. Even my position five Rubik is equal. That's not equal. That's better off than two people in his better team. Better off than the DK. He's got more net worth than the Actually, DK. Actually, in, in fairness, he was a plus four, so it's, the, you know, it's a little bit more reasonable. That is true. Actually, yeah, you know what? I like it, though. I, I like, yep, yep, so, like, always finds gold. This man is ridiculous. But Rubik with gold is actually quite threatening. He gets up like a blink, maybe a four star. These sort of items can really flip a fight. BKB for the gyro, as well as the Satanic coming out next. Uh, not going for the butterfly, something we saw uh the other day which well, you weren't a fan of you didn't like the no butterfly strain of satanic no i think that was a scotty game wasn't it like it's weird some some teams are doing scotty and i think butterfly is a really good item it depends how you feel you haven't really got any heals uh, i don't think i've seen a spirit vessel come out yet for them and that might be part of why so they especially with the ags if you just trigger satanic they'll want to stun you to stop you healing up but they can't because the ags is just attacking but you can go butterfly afterwards I mean, it depends, like, if they they may be aiming a little bit later and maybe looking for some more kills. And we said about the fact that they want to actually deter the side of OG from attacking mid one. And this really helps. 
And you know what might help them actually find a kill? A haste room. They are setting up to posture over on this top lane, continuing to push. They, again, they still have this Aegis. We're looking for the BKB on. I see who that was, but ooh, Satanic again from Jarakov. They look up the bear, and this should be uh, the main entree. 300 gold. Mm, delicious. And now and they're going to continue to go on down. to S4. They've got the call down. Not looking for it just yet. Jarek's oh, just lands a boulder smash onto the Night Stalker. They just missed a gold knock. They didn't see it, but S4 got Astral. Matt tried to help him by Astraline. So they could actually posture straight on top of them and probably kill them. But I, don't, I think it was just outside, so they didn't want to risk it. Again, it's like you were saying, they just want to play it a little bit more safe, use that Aegis as the insurance policy. Yeah, and you just heard it expire right then. So they read it correctly. If they go into that fight and it drags out, maybe 10 seconds, that's the difference between OG Gurn. And... Hold on a sec, Jaro is about to lose Aegis versus not. Yeah, and it's, it's that knowledge of just like that timing. Like, like, do we want to go in here, risk where that Aegis is going to... Maybe we lose a fight because the Aegis times out oh, in the middle fly. of the fight. Yeah, He's they, dead. They're going to find Fly. They've got the double Chakram. They'll rip him down. Ace with another Bloodstone charge as it continues to uh, just rack up for him. I think he's just, like, lobbing them at people's head right now. It kind of caves their skull in. And he goes, yep, that, that collector's in blood. <laughs> do this back in my pocket. Meanwhile, on the bot lane. More found. Ace, <laughs> you said Bloodstone charges. How about another one? And another one. Maybe another one? Would so, he... Would it be weird if he just starts to get covered in more and more blood with that bloodstone as it just the model should, gets more and more red? That should be the effect, or like it gets really big in your inventory and eventually takes up two slots. <laughs> this thing's heavy, man. 50 charges? A lot of blood. And well, maybe they want to hit something that isn't in people's faces right now. They're going to find the bear again. It can't run away. It's got a blade mail on it. This is the, this is the stage of death row. Mid one, he gets caught out. He's going to die. Now, Farda needs to run quick. They've just lost their big fat gyro. They did get the bear, though. They will be able to move away. Nighttime will allow them to get that gap, get them close off, move vision away from them. But Mad is still looking for this. He doesn't have any mobility items. There's the Yules. S4 gets a stun out. Now the Chakrams come through. BKB on S4. They should find the kill on the Yapsaw, but they did use Mad's BKB as well. Really paranoid about that reinitiation from Timbersaw. Yeah, I didn't really like that reinitiation from Secret. I think they should have just left, cut their losses, and they got a little bit overly aggressive there as they tried to find at least something. And, and on them. They only lose Rubik, which is fine, but still, they could have just gone out and only lost one. I think you're right. Like, they know that the Dragon Knight has that Blink Dagger. He's had it for a while now. So you're always risking getting caught out by that. It's good to see that our Devourer, he went for the Dragon Lance. He was going to get the Hurricane Pike, but has decided he is in a position where he can get the Blink Dagger. We were just talking about how he doesn't have any mobility right now, and that's really hurting his ability to chase after the fights. But I don't think he's wrong with his itemization up to this point. They have been on the back foot in these fights. They can't chase. It's even just, how do you chase a timber saw? Uh, a lot of silences and hoping he doesn't have any way of getting rid of them. Sadly, he truly does at this point. So, especially between him and his teammates. And smoke up from OG as they move to the boys in mid lane. And S4 just gets shredded by Ace. Ace getting another kill beyond godlike at this point. They lose the DK with the smoke coming in from the side. It looked like OG were ready to go in, but I don't yeah. know if they were totally ready for Secret to jump on DK. They are, like, they, you never expect this much from a Timbersaw. Like, you, you always afterwards go, oh yeah, it's a Timbersaw. But in your mindset, you're like, how much how much damage can one hero do to a Dragon Knight? That's like the tank, one of the tankiest heroes in the game. And this is without a Spirit Vessel. We were saying Night Stalker didn't go for the Spirit Vessel. Now lift onto the bear again. It's going to die once more. It's got the blade mail, but Ace just doesn't care. A little lift. It almost seems like they're baiting the bear at this point because that's how they got the kill in the last fight. You use your lift, you use your stuns already on the bear. What do you have left? And then you, they try to jump in, and that's a, I, I think help them get the kill on mid one is uh, mad. Pretty far forward, I would say, was they, he could get jumped on. I mean, they know how important the bear is. So they just basically want to force OG to overcommit to defend it, and then once they get the entrance kill, the bear is not that useful. Now look what they found. Get the hands on Jerax, they have to back away. The bear trying to run off, they will get the tower. That is your final out of tower as well on the side of OG, so you are feeling a little bit pushed in now. With a 16k net worth lead on Secret, they're starting to feel how heavy their money bags are. Yeah, and and the only one with buyback is the DK, so if a fight does go poorly, that could just be it. Absolutely. And with Roche up as well, without those, those towers, you start to feel a little bit closed in. So OG, in the next minute or two, they need to smoke up, go for a ward run, get some vision on the map, set up for Roche themselves. Because if they get their hands on an Aegis and stick it on Doomad, easy. Just walk in, 
you're not as paranoid anymore. You don't have to be reserved about these fights. You just charge forward. It'll be interesting to see if OG do contest this Roche if they, as they didn't on the last one, but they lost. Uh, they were only with four at that point on the line, so they couldn't really contest the last. Yeah, they, at that point, S4 was crucial to interrupt and Roche. I mean, when you look at the lineup, if they can actually have a Witch Doctor on the side, not be interrupted, he's brutal with a Death Ward. But you're up against a Night Stalker, and you know Bounty's probably gonna track you at some point. You just sure can toss through, interrupt him every time. Well, we saw what they were doing with the vision when they were taking the tier two. They were able to see that Earth Spirit, get the urn on him, get the track on him, make him very uncomfortable from quite a distance, and that's something that they can do when they go for Roche, especially if they set up in the right spot. So, Bling Dagger has been picked up, picked up with the AOD a little bit ago, and he is actually looking towards that, that Shivas. I mean, we haven't been talking about the guy's itemization much, but I like the fact that he's going for tankiness. He's got the BKB, and that really just gets rid of the threat of Timber, which means he wants the armor to deal with Gyro, and just run down Gyro. If you can get on top of, of Gyrocopter, then actually mid one's in a lot of trouble. Smoke coming out from Seeker. We'll see if they do end up spotting OG who are on the top end of the map. They are coming around. They've got the Night Stalker, so I think he's got vision so far. I'm mad as well as S4. No tail there as well. Well, they, they quite are trying yet. to set up to get ready again? for this fight, and they'll find the bear. There's the telekinesis. They'll have him all by himself. Blade Mail's not going to do enough for you, and an easy 300 gold. That goes to Ace, who's just getting I mean. richer. Like, you see what I mean with OG. Every time they bring that damn bear out, they know what's going to happen. And they need to scout that bear. The lineup is not confident to send anyone else forward to scout because, I mean, you've got the blink for, for mad, but you want to have that to react. You don't want to have that as, like... Even if you do have the blink and you go on the high ground and you don't see them coming, you're going to get stunned, silenced, there's no chance you get it off. You'll be forced to use a BKB charge, and Secret just have so many ways of disengaging. It's really concerning. Interesting to see if OG, maybe they do line up with somebody forward. And they've got out. themselves the OG a little bit far forward. There's the Telkinesis with the Lotus Orb, so the Absor does lift himself back up. The Vulture Smash comes across with a call down. As for, he's got the pipe that was used by Noto. Continue to go in with the Sheba's Guard as well as the Chakram. That's going to be Noto getting chased down by the side of Secret. They'll get themselves the kill. They'll take out two. They've already lost the Witch Doctor. Continuing on forward to S4 as he's got the track on him as well as the side of Secret. Continuing to chase him down. There's Ace coming forward. Chakram, Timber Chain, Whirling Death, and they get the kill. Three dead on OG, and they've only got buyback on LD. Yeah, I the BKBs, the BKBs that used a few charges, they're getting lower now, and this is really starting to hurt them. We see that ginormous gold swing, a combination of bounty and the gold that OG was, was dragging back but in their favor. I mean, don't get me wrong, the net worth was still very much in Secret's favor, but they were starting to actually get some good monies. Now, Secret going really deep, actually going to go straight forward, and they do pick you up on this man. Going to pull him back, only a lot of trouble against Superlow. Jarak just tries to eat the stuns, and he does die for it. Now they're going to try and move away. The cask is bouncing. Ace needs to be very careful here. I mean, this is the thing you got a lot of help. Mal, it can hurt. They will get another tower. And how do you go in? You've got a buyback on Jarek. You really need to defend at this point. Mad does have the science clips. Where's the initiation? Jarek's with a double stun. Follow up from Fly. The cask will not bounce anywhere, though. Now, they're going to go in. Ace, he's going to go straight for Fly. They'll get the kill on the one to Jarek. They go next. They find both the supports. And now the only one left is Mad. He hides in his own special world in the Astro Imprisonment because he knows alone he can do nothing. But no tail is back up. Maybe they've got some hope in this. A secret, they start to rotate to the top lane. You run that bear in hopelessly, though, you will lose it, even with a blade mail. Yeah, they've taken out that bear constantly, and they are going to go for this tier three. She was used again by Ace just to deter them from coming on in. The void thrown onto the bear. They've got track onto No Tail. Again, Secret still here. Five heroes ready to go. But OG know that this is their last tap, their last tier three, their last set of racks. They need to make something happen. So they start with the bear. The BKB pop by me one. They've got the track again onto No Tail. Lotus Orb plays there through onto the bear, but they're just pushing them back. They'll take the tier three. Secret try to re retreat and looking for something was mad there, but with a blink forward, not enough range to get maybe an astral imprisonment, and they will. We'll be able to back off, get that shrine, clean up, and maybe reinitiate in a moment. Yeah, there's no need to risk it. 32k net worth lead, but you got a bounty hunter that can switch on you quickly. Even with the support's dying. Roche is up. Why not just secure that, then go back in and finish the game out? And OG know that this is the case. I mean, you actually look, they're getting ready to wrap around. The movement is occurring, and they're going to run straight in. Oh, the smoke. The absolute instantly comes out, but as the Astro imprisons their ace, will be forced away by the fear. We'll be able to make his escape. Final on the back foot, ready to reinitiate if they need to, but that bear. They're kiting it perfectly on the side of Secret. Moving forward, S4. Can't find anyone. They'll shrine up, and if you actually chase now, OG do lose this game. They can't they can't fight into the choke point, not up against the Timbersaw. They'll go straight for the Roche, and this is this is ballsy, but they have to do something. Yeah, they try to go for this Roche. Ace is ready to go. They've got the track on a fly. I think that's the stolen Astro Imprisonment from Yapsor. They throw the chakra in. They spot that the bear is the only thing in there. So now with Astro Imprisonment thrown 
They actually need to go fight. The cooldown comes out, but BKB by S40 moves forward. The stun is there. They need to find this kill quickly, but they can't get on a puppy. And now they're retreating because mid one, the flat cannon is flying. Lots of damage being done. And Fada on the side with that BKB just doing a lot of damage on the no tail. They'll shred through him. Lone Druid dead for 70 seconds. And now Jarek needs to get out. You can't afford to lose more people. Mad, he's spotted out by the track. Disarmed as well. BKB comes out, but he actually has to use the actual just to run away. S4 trying to reinitiate, but there is your timber once again just shredding through the Dragon Eye. He's going to die off, and they are in full retreat. Only two people left, and you've got barely anything to work with. The fight back there from Lone Druid, but that's all you've got. You're still two down. They'll jump in. They'll find another one as Mad just disappears from the map. And there's the Astral coming out. GG gets called. OG have had enough. Secret, they take game one with almost no, as much gold net worth lead as minutes passed in the game. Wow. Just uh, averaging an, a thousand net worth per minute gain, and it's just... How do you come back from that? They were so far ahead once Bounty Hunter had that level six that he was able to track, he was able to boost that gold. They were. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. 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 <laughs> 